right, uh, 15 minutes before 12 o'clock. Are you going to do it then? Oh, you got what? Oh, you got prizes. Okay, okay. Uh, let's see. We're gonna have fun with Joe, but Joe's down oh, okay. in Bellevue at the Splish Splash Bash Heritage Festival uh, fundraising that? event. Uh, what's that? <laughs> and, and and Tish Muller is gonna sit. I thought Dan was gonna sit, but Tish is here. Good morning, Tish. How you doing? Good morning, Larry. You ready to have some fun with us? I hope it's easy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're gonna have some help. I have a feeling from from our listeners. Well, I usually do. Thank goodness. From your lifelines, it's all big band trivia today. Oh, are you familiar with big band? Music? A little bit. Oh, good, good. Uh, so I won't be playing any sound clips. I'll just be asking you questions about the era because today we're we're remembering 70 years ago, and the big band music was the the music of the day. Right. So we wanted to kind of use that and uh, some interesting stuff I never even knew. So my dad landed on the day it he went did all the way to Germany. Oh wow! But he was captured. Oh. And how? Um, he's with us now. No, no, he's not with us now. But he, li- but he lived a long life after that. Mm-hmm. Wow. Oh. Oh, he was in his late 50s. Oh, he died young. Oh, wow. Wow. But he survived D-Day. He survived D-Day. He ended up um, getting offered a battlefield commission, but he wouldn't take it because he said, you can send me where you want, but I'm not going to tell somebody else to go. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. 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 That's amazing. I never knew that. Okay. Well. Because that's, that's like telling them they might die then. Right. He said, I'm not going to send somebody else to die. You can send me where you want, but I'm not going to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. wow. Yeah, I bet a lot of guys felt that way, too. I bet they did. Yeah. They hardly talked about it, right? All those guys. They don't. Yeah. He didn't talk about it, but yeah. he came back a changed man. Mm-hmm. He drank. Uh, oh, yeah. 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 Gosh. Was his hair the same color, or was it? Because I know my uncle went, and he had jet black hair, and when he came back, it was all white. No, he still had dark hair. Was oh, your uncle okay. in the D-Day? Your uncle? I, I, I don't know. Oh. Um, I can't remember if he was, but he went over there and came back with wow. gray hair. Wow. Well, 70 years, that's a, that's a milestone, definitely. So I'm, it gl- is. I'm glad we were um, able to spend some time with that this morning. Well, so today we're going to kind of spend some time on the lighter side of that era, which is the music, which contributed greatly. When, when Robin and I perform music at the nursing homes, and there are World War II vets in the group, mm-hmm. and we play the song Lily Marlene, it is like every man he gets glassy-eyed, and there's, there's something about that song. The women don't respond to that song no. the same way. I don't remember that one. But the men all do. Both sides, by the way. We, we've had Germans like former Nazis. They probably yeah. don't like us to say that, but that's <laughs> former G- German soldiers, whatever you want to call them, you know, but they were Nazis. And they will come up to us and say, was that, and they'll say the German name for the song. I love that song. And then we, yeah. we I always forget what the German name was, but the Americans called it Lily Marlene. So, All right, so today it's big band trivia, and uh, what are the prizes? Oh, oh, we've got lots of prizes. We got a ton. You're going to do those and I'll do these? <laughs> okay. <laughs> then we got a bag of something, too. Uh, we have 10 Shamrock Bucks to O'Malley's Alley and Oyster Bar. That's located at 24 wow. South Magnolia, downtown on the Ocala Square. So you can uh, go order something from O'Malley's Alley, and uh, this will get you $10 toward whatever it is you're ordering. And the Old George sandwich is terrific. Old George? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's a Cuban sandwich. Oh, is it hot? Well, George or isn't cold Cuban, or? is he? George yes. Prasco? Oh, he is? Yeah. Oh, okay. Is he really? I didn't know that. Wow. I just didn't know that. And then we have a $20 gift certificate to Bob Wine's Camellia Gardens and Nursery. So how did a Cuba guy end up opening an Irish pub? <laughs> <laughs> it's very entrepreneurial you see. yes that's right <laughs> and then i have a free new grilled chicken sandwich from chick-fil-a in the paddock mall so this is a coupon good for one sandwich and you do not have to purchase anything else you can just get the new sandwich and then we also have two tickets to the Silver Springs Lions Club train show, which is happening next Saturday and Sunday at the National Guard Armory. So you get two free passes to that. And you can also bring a uh, non-perishable food item to help the, the food banks. Plus, Tish just handed me a certificate to the Great American Cookie Company wow. for $30 here in the Paddock Mall. So we've, we're, we're pretty awesome with prizes here. Yes, we Today are. Today is a good prize day. Yeah, yeah, what else do you got? Today is a very good prize day. We have um, a cooking uh, utensils, pans, 
Yeah. Is the camera on? <laughs> it's too big. Yeah, the camera's yeah. on. Yeah. Okay. Um, I can see it. I can see it on the camera. And this is a prize from Pillsbury, and it has a retail value of twenty-five dollars. That's not bad. You That's got, not bad. Wow, you got at least a hundred dollars in prizes yeah. today. Three at separate least. Separate cooking pans. Plus. Ah, and what else is that? What's that thing? Let's see. A piece Looks, of plastic. I think it's an apron. <laughs> oh, it's an apron. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep, I think that's an apron. All right. So you can cook with the three cooking pans and have the apron on to stay clean. And and you get the cookies and you get uh, O'Malley's Alley and the chicken sandwich from Chick Fil A and the um, oh, good stuff. Bob Wines. Community All right, so we need the nursery and the Lions Club train show. We're definitely going to need some help with these questions, I think. Yeah. Today. So uh, we need somebody to bet on Robin, somebody to bet on Tish. The phone number to do that is the WOCA Climate Control Source Hotline, and we'll take your calls during this break at 622-9622. WOCA. Beef, the top protein in food service. That story coming up on This Land of Ours. Do you enjoy receiving all the news from the Southeast Agnet reports? Well, now there's another way to stay informed with our Southeast Agnet e-newsletter. Visit southeastagnet.com and click on the sign up for our Southeast Agnet e-newsletters to start enjoying agricultural news coverage delivered directly to your inbox. Your beef checkoff does all kinds of things to help make sure consumers feel good about buying beef, like researching the health benefits of beef and sharing this news with healthcare professionals or discovering new lean cuts of beef like the Denver Cut Steak, which fits an active lifestyle, or sharing the good news about these new beef products and cuts with chefs, grocers, and consumers. Get to know your checkoff and start sharing your views at mybeefcheckoff.com. Paid for by the Beef Checkoff. Beef is still what's for dinner when folks dine out, at least. That according to the 2013 Usage and Volumetric Assessment of Beef in Food Service report. The report showed beef is still the number one protein in food service, with pounds of beef sold in food service increasing by 79 million pounds to a total volume of 8 billion pounds last year. Also, the report shows beef represents 32% of the total protein market share in food service. In fact, 97% of restaurant operators feature beef on the menu. Beef Checkoff Value Subcommittee Chair Sid Vibrock says this research shows operators understand the value beef brings to their business and know beef is a mainstay on the menu due to strong consumer demand for beef. The annual report is conducted on behalf of the checkoff to understand the usage of beef in the food service industry and respondents include protein purchasing executives within 180 of the top 250 restaurant chains representing $41 billion of 2012 food service industry sales. For more information, visit mybeefcheckoff.com. Julie McPeak with Southeast Agnet. Thank you, Julie. Seven minutes before 12 o'clock, we have our players. And let me tell you who they are. Bob is betting on you, Robin. Yep. And Robert is betting on you, Tish. Yep. It's two Bobs, actually. That's right. All right. Now, I'm going to start with an easy one. It's a multiple choice. That's what makes it easy. And uh, here we go. Let me just try to get rid of this reverb thing that's happening here. (laughs) Uh, Artie Shaw was a skilled clarinetist during the big band era and apparently a ladies' man. He found himself in the gossip columns a lot. To which of these four women was he not married in his eight trips to the altar? Eight. (laughs) He was married eight times. Which one of these four was not his wife? Was it Doris Day, Eva Gardner, Lana Turner, or Evelyn Keys? Evelyn Keys? No. What's wrong with your bell? Not working. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Evelyn Keys is off uh, the list. Ava Gardner. Uh, two left. <laughs> and who were the other two? Doris Day. Doris Day is right. Woo, good job. Tish right. and Robert are on the board. You got a point there. There we got a point. Uh, all right, here's yeah, an- she was pretty wholesome. Here's another multiple Doris choice. Day. Another multiple choice before we get into the really hard ones. Uh, there were many reasons for the decline of the big band era. Which of these, which they're all good reasons... But which one happened first? Was it the two-year musicians' union strike? Was it the rise of bebop and rock and roll music? Was it the end of World War II that caused the end of the big band era? Or was it the civil rights movement? The first one. What was it? The first one. (laughs) You've got to say it. You can't say the first one. No. What what, what are the choices again? You have to name them. (laughs) Because you can't. Oh, man. You don't remember what the first one was? Uh, no. But that's... All right, I'm going to read them in different order. Okay. Oh. So the first one will not be the first one. Okay. Was it the end of World War II? Was it the rise of bebop and rock music? 
Was it the civil rights movement or was it the two-year musicians' union strike? Musicians' union strike. It was that, yes. That really? Was, yes. I was going to guess Bebop. <laughs> I would have had it wrong, Bob. <laughs> Call in, Bob. Call in, Robert. Two for Tish and Robert. Zip for me and Bob. <laughs> All right. Uh, let me do another one. Uh, th- we're looking for the name of a band leader. This band leader was instrumental in introducing jazz arrangements from the improvisational styles of Dixieland. Oh, is it Benny Goodman? No, to a more commercial oh. audience. Although jazz historians debate his prominence in the jazz movement, there is little doubt that he helped to make the feel of jazz accessible to mainstream audiences. He was one of the first to form what was to become Big Band. During his career, he had 16 recordings that hit number one on the music charts. Who are we talking about? Not Here. Benny Goodman. No. Harry. No, not Harry anything. Oh. <laughs> Let me see if I can get a, a helper here. Is it Buddy Rich? Yeah. No. Buddy Good morning. Do you know? Paul Whiteman. Yeah, Paul Whiteman is right. Ooh. Good job. All right, who's that point for? Oh, this Robin. Is, oh, this is Bob. Okay, Good job. yeah. Bob's yeah, Bob, working for his Bob got a point for himself right there. All right. Yep. Good job. All right, the next one. Probably the most revered icon of the era was this man. He was equally distinguished as an arranger, composer, and an influence not only in the big band era, but on all musical artists. He received a special Pulitzer Prize. He had a postage stamp issued in his honor and a limited edition coin. Uh, He might might, might take the A train to the Cotton Club to see this satin doll. Was that Benny Goodman? No. No. Who might take the A train to the oh, Cotton Club the to A see train. his satin doll? Kind of a hint there, I guess. Come, oh, oh. Come on, it? who are we talking about? Duke Ellington. You got it. Duke Ellington. Who's the point for? Robin. Robin. Ooh, All right. We're now tied. All right. All right. Oh, two man. Two to two. All right, the next one. Uh, Stan Kenton was perhaps the most creative and experimental of all the big band leaders, often controversial. Kenton brought innovation to the world of big bands. He incorporated Afro-Cuban beats and Latin rhythms into his music. What was the name of his theme song for his band? The name of the theme song for Stan Kenton's band. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. No ideas? The name of... um, In the uh, mood? Not in the mood, no. Good morning, do you know? Artistry and rhythm. Good job. I had a feeling Jim would know that one. (laughs) All right, and who's the point for Robin. Yeah. Oh, All right. We're ahead by one, Bob. Three to two. All right. There you go. Uh, Where are you, Pete, when I need you? <laughs> <laughs> All right. These guys were brothers. Uh, Jimmy played the saxophone. Tommy played the trombone. They, Dorsey. Dorsey is right. That's the that's the answer we're looking <laughs> for. Stab in the dark. Dude. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. Perhaps no band leader had the pulse of the American people more than Glenn Miller. His music had that jazz swing tradition that we're familiar with, but seemed to hit the mark for the times. His In the Mood is a classic of the big band era. Miller's career was cut short. Why? He went to the service. Mm. He went into the military. (sighs) (laughs) A little little more than that. A little more than that. He was shot down. Uh, Yes, yes. The answer is missing in action on a flight from the United Kingdom to Paris. Okay. Yeah. Three for Robert and Tish, four for Bob. No one really knows what happened, but the conspiracy theories say he was shot down, so we'll take that. Oh, so they never found him. I don't know. Uh, Here's one last one. Woody Herman called his bands The Herd. His music... H-E-R-D. The, his music was mostly fast-paced and concentrated on the individual musical talents of its members. In 1946, his band was so popular, it was voted the best band by Esquire magazine, Downbeat magazine, Billboard, and Metronome. What happened to the herd in 1946? They disbanded. They disbanded is right. <laughs> that was kind of easy, wasn't We're it? We're Oh, you're tied. We need another question. Oh, no, you need another one. <laughs> yes, all we right, do. Right. we got to interrupt the right, in, a, in a typical big band band... <laughs> Uh, how many saxophones are there? Four. No. no. A six. No. A three. Five is right. Ooh, Five is okay, right. Robert, Robert <laughs> Anglin wins today by one. Fox News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. D-Day heroes honored 70 years later. Our claim to freedom and to the inherent dignity of every human being. That claim is written 
in the blood on these beaches. President Obama among the world leaders gathered in Normandy for commemoration.